Turkey, as a country pivotally linking East and West, North and South, has a unique role to play in promoting peace and understanding. Turkey embraces both Asia and Europe. The land on the west side of the narrow channel is Europe. On the east side is Asia. Travelers from the west encounter the cultural richness of the east. And those from the east encounter the technology and innovation of the west. To both, the world begins to show a new and different face. Turkey is the land of the poet Homer's birth. It was crossed by the conquering Alexander the Great. Classical Greek civilization once flourished here. During the Byzantine Empire, it was the leading center of the Christian world. And later, under the Ottoman Turks, it was the heart of Islamic civilization. Mirroring its kaleidoscopic history, Turkey today is a place of immense human diversity. In towns and cities, you can see people with Arab and Mongolian features. People with faces reminiscent of Greek statues, Russian faces, East European faces. It's as if the land of Turkey is trying to encompass and unite all humanity calling out, West, you may be East in my embrace. East, you may be West in my home. For centuries, the Turks had been portrayed in the West as uncivilized savages. Relying only on information from the West, viewing things always from the Western perspective does not provide a true picture of the world. There is an African view of the world. A world seen from the Middle East, from Latin America, through the eyes of various ethnic minorities. There's more to international society than just the West. In fact, what might be called the tyranny of images, the propagation of stereotypes and ready-made images, may have even increased. One billion Muslims worldwide. How many are potential terrorists? Tonight, a special report, the face of Islam. Much of the information that floods our world has been selected and tailored to fit preconceived notions and stereotypes. In the extremity of wartime, repeatedly airing scenes of our side coming under attack will incite and enrage viewers. In contrast, scenes of the hellish misery inflicted on the other country's citizens will rarely be broadcast. Frustrated local authorities are asking amazing how the notion of jihad. The growth and development of mass media has actually increased the danger of proliferating stereotypes and ready-made images. You don't have to be a history Islamic fundamentalism and terror. We are all exposed to these risks. Ten o'clock for our special report. Do Islamic clerics use the pulpit to stir up hatred? Against it's vital that we each ask ourselves some important questions. With tensions simmering in the region, experts say it's not. Do I accept without question the images shown to me? I want them dead. What about the mercy killing? Do I believe unconfirmed reports without first examining them? Have I unwittingly allowed myself to become prejudiced? Do I really have a grasp of the facts of the matter? Have I confirmed these things for myself? Have I gone to the scene? Have I met the people involved? 
Have I listened to what they have to say? Exactly what is to hear what Am I being swayed by malicious rumors? Religion and terror. I believe that this kind of inner dialogue is crucial. That's because people who are aware they may harbor unconscious prejudices can interact with people of other cultures more easily than those who are convinced they have no prejudices. When we stop looking at ourselves, when we no longer question ourselves, we become self-righteous and dogmatic. Our interactions then become a one-way street. We cannot hear others, and real dialogue becomes impossible. The kind of dialogue that can create peace with others must start with an open and earnest inner dialogue. If we think about it, people are not born Turks or Americans. They're not born Palestinians or Jews. These are merely labels. Each of us is born as a precious entity of life, as a human being. Our mothers didn't give birth to us thinking, I'm giving birth to a Japanese, or I'm giving birth to an Arab. Their only thought was, may this child be healthy and grow. Perhaps the clouds and wind high above the blue waters of the Bosporus are whispering among themselves as they gaze down upon humanity. Wake up. From up here it's clear that the world is one. You are all citizens of the earth. There is no such thing as Americans. No such thing as Iraqis. There's only this boy, this life, called Bob, who happens to live in America. There's only this boy, this life, Mohammed, who happens to live in Iraq. Both are children of the earth. And yet they're divided by the names of their countries and taught to hate each other. Wake up from this foolishness, this arrogance, this cruel habit of passing hatred and resentment on to the next generation. We need to awaken to a common consciousness that we are all inhabitants of Earth. This awareness will not be found in some distant place. It won't be found on a computer screen. It lies in our hearts. in our ability to share the pain of our fellow human beings. It's the spirit that says, as long as you are suffering, whoever you are and whatever your suffering may be, I suffer too.